happy to say I've got half of the kit fitted. Now the reason why I didn't film this is because I had to learn how to do this as I was doing it and that's quite a, well, long process. Lots of testing, trials, different products and stuff like that. So now that I've figured out how to do it, I'm going to show you guys the process on the other side. As you can see, some significant modification is required. So that's cut out and ready. The next step is to make the second rear fender because then the piece has to be fitted to that. This has actually been glued together. So I need to work on that. a bit of a grind positioning it and once I got it in place I was so happy that I just drilled and put the rib nuts in. So now I'm going to put it on and fill all the places that I need to fill and glue everything that I need to glue and then fit the end cap properly because that's slightly off still and then move on to the front. gaps so all of this needs to be filled that needs to be filled in all along here there's still some gaps so after a bunch of sanding and grinding put a piece that more or less fits after I get these on and primed I'm gonna take it for a test run which will be at the end of this video So let that sit and then tomorrow fill it over the top and it will become smooth. So as you can see, I've gone for a rather unique style on the front, which I think will be pretty cool, but is a bit of a pain in the ass to actually do. That said, I'm quite happy that this kit is gonna be one of a kind and completely unique. So the back's dried, it just needs to be sanded, filled, sanded, filled, sanded, filled, and primed, painted. So I'm gonna move on to the front, which is way more complicated. mocked up and next I just got to get the fitment perfect cut a bit off the front I still need to cut the spikes and fill in the rear over here and fill in the spits there's still a bit of work to do on it but it's getting there so for the holes I drill them at 8.5 even though it says to do them at 9 because it's plastic as you can see lots and lots and lots of cutting and modification required to get this thing to fit flush So I got the pieces cut out. It's getting pretty late here. It's like 10 o'clock, but I want to get everything glued down tonight so it can dry overnight. I'm gonna heat and bend and tape and glue and fill. that all glued up it needs to dry overnight now and then tomorrow I will be on to putting filler all over the place and sanding and priming. So next day tired as hell got like five hours sleep but it's time to sand the guards. The point of using the aerodite is to fill the edge with something harder than filler.
getting pretty close now. I've got to sand, got to put the lines back in and a couple of screws underneath to hold it in place properly. Starting to get smooth. I just thought this was an interesting point to check in because the two arches are at very different stages of the sanding process and it could be good to highlight how many passes you do have to do. Down here the edges are still pretty rough but moving up they've started to be smoothened out a bit even to form fit reasonably perfectly. Here's some with the filler spray just applied and you can start to see there's ridges and valleys that need to be filled in. Still too lumpy right? Onto this one now it's had its 240 sanding so there's just certain little areas like this that need to be filled in ever so slightly. It's pretty damn smooth and everything fits. I also still need to put the body line like that one. This stuff not only as a filler but as a consistent coat so I can see where the dips and valleys are. I think I'm done with the bog, I've moved on to just the filler spray now. Still a couple of little bits, especially on this front left one to smooth out on the spikes. Other than that it's pretty damn smooth at this point. It's been like two days of sanding and doing the fine details, getting everything really smooth and everything's on. All the pieces are on, ready for a test drive. It's been a long time since I've got to drive this car, so it's kind of exciting to get it back on the road. And also it's the first time I'm gonna feel the dynamic of the wire wheels. All right, testing the car in the morning. So now I gotta get it down this ridiculous driveway and onto the road. This is a bumpy road. Well, if I go as fast as a truck, I don't seem to rub it in. I need to make a real conscious effort to drive wider than I normally would. Well, I made it through a drive okay, and it rubbed a few times, but I'm in like one of the worst roads possible. I'm gonna test it a bit more around the 50k zones and see how that goes, but I'm thinking it'll be fine at this point. Damn, it looks good. Stance, everything looks good. That's the thing, there's always the play between stance and it rubbing. I'd rather keep my stance and have it rub now and then. The best part about this is I have a working car again. Took forever and was a pain in the ass, but yeah, looking at it now, it's worth it. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching guys. The next stuff coming up is the final stuff I need to do. I need to paint it. I need to paint the wheels. I need to do the front splitter. I need to do the diffuser. A couple of little touch-ups to do here and there. Tune. And then it's done. I hope. Remember to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. See ya. Oh, better rubbing back there.